Regiment of the Medieval Festival. Six B has worked really hard to give you this wonderful production. After more than a month of working diligently, we are proud to present our play to you. You will be transported to a different time, a medieval time. There will be knights and a lot of drama. Ooh. Our side and Palamon will fight for their love of their life, Lady Emily. There will be a tragic ending, but you will have to wait and see. There will be a savior, Robin Hood, and his gang of outlaws, the Merry Men. Finally, Maid Marian will surprise you with her bow and arrow skills. Sit back, relax, and enjoy Six B's production of the Medieval Festival. <laughs> an evil duke named Hastings. There were two brave cousins, Arcite and Palamon, who fought alongside them. Unfortunately, Duke Theseus quickly captured them. He brought them back to his dungeon, where they shared one tiny cell with one very tiny window. Ugh, always the same view from the shrunken window. Never anything but the flowers and the garden servants. Well, at least you have something to look at. Give me this one. It's my turn. You always say that. Give me a little bit longer. You're such a greedy person. You've had it for hours now. There's nothing for me to do, think, or look at. <gasps> oh, my. I spot a lady. A beautiful lady. I wonder who she is. It was Lady Emily picking flowers in the palace garden. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful garden. Don't I look beautiful in it? <laughs> Although Palamon had just seen her, he immediately fell in love with her. Do you believe in love at first sight, cousin? I believed in a lot of things before we were locked in this horrible tower. Well, you should change your mind now, because I have fallen madly in love with the lady I see before me. She can't possibly be real. She must be an angel. Calm down, wise guy. Let me see. How lovely these flowers are. Not as beautiful as me, but they're nice enough. OMG, she's the love of my life. I've never seen a more beautiful lady in all of my travels. How dare you, my guys, are my true love. Your love, she's my love. No way, I already called dibs. I love her the most. She's mine to have, not yours. Are you mocking my very existence by claiming my future wife as your aunt? How dare you? How is this about you and your existence? Their argument became louder and louder until John the jailer couldn't help but check on them. What's with all this yelling? I finally managed to sit down to watch the latest episode of The Voice Medieval Edition, and I couldn't hear the contestants when his green sleeves. Ugh, honestly, whenever I got families in the same cells, it's always a problem. What is this quarrel of yours about anyway? Her! <laughs> Too bad for you, she's the daughter of Duke Theseus, the lovely Lady Emily, like either of you could have a chance with her. Well, I'm still never speaking to you again, you piece of sheep's horn. Good. I never want to talk to you again either. I wish you went away and never came back. Are you wishing my command, Palamon? Sir Arsite, you are free. There's someone in Athens who has won your freedom. Yes! Wait, no! Ha ha, she'll be mine after all. Sir Arsite, you must sleep by sunset. You're forbidden to come back to this castle. So Arsite left the castle, but not for long. He devised a plan to get close to Lady Emily again. He came back in disguise as her servant, where he would take orders from her lips, touch what she touched, and breathe the same air that she breathed. Um, creepy. <laughs> How have I been so lucky to breathe the same air as the lovely Lady Emily? If only Palamon were here, he could see how close I am to get. He would be so jealous. Arsite! Oh, she calls my name so sweetly. Arsite, what on earth is taking you so long? I need my linen to the worst of it ever. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Palamon sat in his jail cell, longing to get out and be with Emily. I have to get out, but how can I ever escape? Oh, all right, Palamon, it's time for me to call tonight. Let's do my do list. Clean the cells. Check. Serve the prisoner's dinner. Check. Yep, she should be everything. Night, night. That was definitely not everything. In fact, John had forgotten something very important. OMG, oh, he didn't lock the door. Now I can escape and find Lady Emily and we can wait and live happily ever after. Palamon fled out of jail and into the darkness of night. Meanwhile, Things were not going so well for Sir Arsite. I must get away from all the work. Even though Lady Emily's beautiful face motivates me, I don't like to be bossed around. She's kind of intense. <laughs> so Arsite waited until Lady Emily was asleep. He snuck away, heading deep into the woods. There, he heard a rustle in the bushes. Guess who? Palamon, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be in jail. What do you mean? What are you doing here? Are you sneaking in the woods to steal my Emily? 
Why would Anise see Emily if she's mine already? You fop fiddle! You quit me! They were so distracted by the argument that they didn't notice Duke Theseus coming toward the clearing. Well, well, well. What have we here? Seems like Emily's servant and the escaped prisoner. Before I throw you back in jail, what exactly is this quarrel about? Emily is mine! No, Emily is mine! You two are fighting like little boys. You want to solve this problem? Fight like men at my jousting tournaments. Whoever wins gets Emily. The other one must die. You're joking, right? I won't really have to marry one of them, will I? Emily, if you marry him, you'll suffer for all eternity. If you marry me, you'll live in paradise. Wait, aren't you my servant? If you marry him, you'll suffer. Believe me, I've lived with him all the days of my life, and he's almost as bad as the devil himself. And who are you? Enough! Tomorrow, in my jousting tournament, the penalty of your absence is death. The next day, the jousting venue was full of townsfolk, excited to see the great battle over the lovely Lady Emily. Welcome, lords and ladies, peasants and other peasants, to a jousting match. Let the games begin! The knights mount their horses and they're off. Our side has gone off to a fast start with lots of power, but Palman seems to be going very fast too. Oh, they missed. Maybe I should have just had them play rock, paper, scissors. Let's try that again. Arsai and Palamon are charging at each other. Palamon lunges forward with his lance. Ooh, Arsai's head drops to the ground. Looks like he's going to use his mace. You're a goner, you pig. Oh, yeah, I thought you were the pig. Now there's some action. And now they're galloping towards each other again. Arsai is ready with his sword. Now Palamon is holding up his lance in defense, and yikes, Arsai rode straight into it. Palamon wins. Finally, it's decently good. The cheers of the crowd went quiet as Arsene fell off his horse and onto the ground. Cousin, sweet, Emily. My friend, what have we done? I didn't mean to. I was wrapped up in my love for Emily. Well done, Arsene. It's Palamon. Yes, yes. Well, you have fought bravely. Come now, Arsene. Take Emily's hand and you two shall be married on the morrow. It's still Palamon. Do I have to? His hair is thin and his mouth looks so odd. Emily, dear, you should be honored. Honored? I think you mean terrified. Dad, don't make me do this. Come, Arsene, you will live in the manor with me and my noble family. We will have the best family ever. It's still Palamon. So Palamon took Lady Emily's hand. Ew, you smell like rotten eggs. And they lived miserably ever after. of the round table. We are strong and we are able. There's no foe we cannot vanquish. We know right makes mine. Sing with me.
turns out the Knights of the Round Table aren't only trained in battle, they're also trained in dance. I'm sure we can all agree we were ready for more stories rather than knights prancing around. Now, where should I start with this one? Well, Robin Hood is an outlaw, but only to the sheriff and nobles. He steals from the rich and gives to the poor. He may have some conflicting morals, to say the least. But at least the people love him. Now, as you may know, he has a group of merry men who assist him and practically worship the ground he walks on. You, you also need to know about a character who betrayed Robin Hood, the terrible woman. His name says it all. He is dreadful and spiteful. Someone who betrays Robin Hood betrays the people. Anyway, personal grudges aside, this play is about Will Scarlet, a servant of Robin Hood. But, now, but you'll have to wait and see what happens as this play unfolds. It was just after dawn when Robin Hood gathered his gang of outlaws, the merry men and cheered force. They were hiding out when they began to hear whispers that Robin's warmer home, Loxley Hall, had been seized. You, Will Scarlet, and you, much smaller son, go and scout out what has happened at my old home, Loxley Hall. Your wish is our command, Robin. And while you're there, I want you to retrieve two hidden pouches of money that contain valuable jewels. We can sell them and distribute the money to those in need. We'll do our best, Robin. So the pair set off through the forest. We're off to see what happened. What happened at Locks? We all just hands. This is going to be a long journey. The two men journeyed through shared forest until they came to a house built of stone. The sheriff's men stood defending the structure with great crowd around them. Looks like they aren't letting in any of Robin's old tenants or servants. You stay here at the edge of the forest. I'll fix my head and pull up so they won't recognize me. Yes, sir. Da 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 da. Sorry, I'll be quiet. What seems to be happening here? Good people, in the name of Prince John, this joint is not ours. You can save me, pay up. Don't worry, Robin will find a way to fix this. Will Scarlet tiptoed into Loxley Hall and went upstairs to gather the rest of his and Robin's goods. He moved stealthily to the end of the room, opened a trunk, and lifted two patches out of it. Ah, here it is. Now, let's have to get out of this place. Will almost looked away unnoticed, but he unfortunately stepped out of the room just as Sir Guy turned the corner. You there, stop. Where do you think you're going? Well, 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 lad. What exactly do you have a nose about? I mean no harm. I've been a servant here for 20 years. There's no work for me now that my old master, Robin Loxley, has become a horrible outlaw. And that people may all blind here. Well, you probably know that I, Sir Guy, am now in charge of Loxley Hall. And I don't want people like you working for me. Be on your way. Thank you, sir. So long. Farewell. Farewell. Warman the steward, who once served Robin Hood and had now betrayed him, approached Sir Guy suspiciously. And who is that? Just a poor, just a poor man collecting what was left of his meager bowl. Sir Guy, I highly recommend you check what that man was actually carrying. He could be carrying out his former master's goods. Ah, yes, good point. Stop that man! Will knew who was being followed. Sir, tell me what are exactly in your bags. My garments, my belongings, as I told you before. Let us have them. If you're telling the truth, you'll be fine. Yep, he's telling the truth. This is old garments. Wait, what are you hiding under your cloak? <gasps> Good Lord, it's Will Scarlet. He can lead us to Robin Hood. Let's take this traitor away, throw him in the dungeons, and prepare for him to be hanged. We'll bring him before the sheriff of Nottingham and use heated irons to get the truth out of him and see if it betrays his master's hiding place. There's one tiny problem in your plan, Warman. I'm not a lowly traitor like you. Meanwhile, much ran as fast as little legs could carry him. <sighs> Robin, I ran as fast as my long and powerful legs could carry me. They captured Will! He must be rescued or I myself will die with him. Go and prepare the others for battle. We will leave for Nottingham at sunset. The merry men and Robin planned their attack late into the night. In the morning, some of the men, along with Robin, disguised himself and headed toward the town square. I fear that they will hang Will at noon. Let us set the prisoner free. And so Robin Hood and the merry men set out to find the hangman and set their plan in motion. I 
I am no traitor. I will not betray my master. Don't worry, we'll hang out beside your rotting bones. I have one more request before I die. Go on. My master, Robin Hood, has never let one of his men die at a time of death. Put a sword in my hand, and let me fight against your men. Ha, you really think I'd give you that chance? You better believe it, you coward. You... Um, we're just gonna cut this part out, since the following words are not for young ears. Let's get to the part where he asked the crowd to hang Scarlet. Pleasure of killing this thief? I'm a Scarlet. Good, then come up here and take away the old man. And as the old palmer took off his cloak, everybody realized it was Robin Hood in disguise. <gasps> men of Sherwood, freemen of England, save this innocent man from death. It's Robin Hood! Go now, leave him be, and no more harm shall come upon anyone else. Treachery, down with Robin Hood! After a quick sign from Robin Hood, all the men ripped off their disguises. They drew their weapons, and the crowd shouted for joy at the sight. Sheriff, let my friend go, or the first arrow I shoot will be aimed at you. You'll pay for this, Robin Hood. When the sheriff and his guards saw that they were in number, they turned to flee. Wicked awesome! I'm sure we will meet again. Come, merry men, let us return to the forest. Long live Robin Hood! Thank you, Robin, you saved my life! It is I who should be thanking you. You are willing to die for me. Good people of Nottingham, I will return. And they head home to Sherrod Forest to face a share of another death.
such beauty, and even the pathetic contestants didn't look bad in their little jousting match. I mean, could, could you see the looks on those people's faces? Quite a scandal. But moving on, because this story will leave you in awe. Trust me. Do I sound like a commercial advertiser yet? Yes? Okay, good. This story will really leave you in awe because it's more of a scandal than the last one. Two outlaws in love. But a certain someone, me, won't let that happen. Keep your eyes open and don't fall asleep on that fold-up chair to watch the amazing, wonderful, tender-hearted, rational sheriff of Nottingham go against two wicked, cruel, unintelligent outlaws. That's how it goes, right? Yes, it is how it goes. But I'll let the, the story continue from a different perspective now. Once upon a medieval time, there lived an outlaw named Robin Hood. He was no ordinary outlaw. He stole from the rich, which in this case was also the powerful sheriff in Nottingham, and the corrupt Prince John, and others like Sir Guy. Oh, look, there he is now at the Gamwell Festival, and there is Robin Hood and Maid Marian. The plot thickens. We'll leave you to watch this story unfold. It's a fine day to join a tongue and dance in the forest. Indeed, I love a merry festival. Look, I'd say this is the best festival we've ever had. He looks oddly familiar, and so does that shepherdess over there, to be honest. Ready, aim, fire. Bullseye, oh yeah, bow down, bow down. Hmm, who is that young woman, and how is she so good at archery? She looks a lot like Lord Fitzwalter's daughter, Maid Marian. I've heard her name is Clorinda. She's just a lowly shepherdess who often attends the very impressive, my lady. Let's see if you're a match for me. Bullseye again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Seems like a tie. It does seem that way. And as a reward for your skills, I claim your hand. My prize is having you claim my hand. Very well. I hear that you are Robin Hood of Sherwood Forest. I am Maid Marian, and we must run for it. Marion, what are you doing here? Shh! Robin Hood and Maid Marion? Quickly! Get that scoundrel! After him! Unable to catch our heroes, Sir Guy at this point, the Sheriff of Nottingham, Go to interrogate Lord Fitzwalter, Marion's father. Oh, and look, it seems as though that creep Prince John has joined them. Lord Fitzwalter, come out immediately. What is all this racket? Who are you all? Who am I? Who am I? How dare you? Um, you, you complete fool. This is Prince John, who rules in King Richard's stead. And I, the Sheriff of Nottingham, his loyal servant. What do you mean, Ronningham? Whatever. Prince John, isn't Richard our king? Silence! My brother is currently away, and I get to run things my way. We're here looking for that putrid outlaw, Robin Hood. Last time we saw him, he was with your daughter. My daughter? What, Marion? Nay, sis. She has been upstairs, leaving tapestries with her lady in waiting, and now she's asleep. Please do not disturb her. Your Excellency, perhaps we should be looking for Robin Hood instead of waking silly maidens. Very well. <sighs> Honestly, that daughter of mine. Marion, if I find out you stuck out again, you'll be grounded for life. As Prince John, the Sheriff, and Sir Guy take off into the forest after Robin Hood, they come across the band of merrymakers. Out of the way, peasants. We are looking for Robin Hood. Maid Marion, you are in traitorous company. Come with us. No. Marion, get behind me. I will protect you. Thank you very much, but I can protect myself. We are not leaving without you both in our possession. Step any further, and I will shoot. What you. she said. 
Well, that is rich. You think I'm scared of a little girl? Ouch! Why are you little? Good to reach, Tosh. And then the battle of great proportions broke out, sending swords into the air and blood on the ground. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let us run for it. Retreat, retreat. When Marion turned home that evening, she found her father standing by the door, waiting for her. Marion, what are you doing here? Uh, um, uh, um. At that moment, there was a furious knock at the door. Let me in. It's the sheriff of Nottingham here with the king's men. Made Marion come out immediately. Please, father, I'll do anything if you just send them away. Sir Guy is gravely injured after your daughter shot him with her arrow. My daughter? No, she would never do such a thing. Really? Well, perhaps we should take you to Prince John and you can deal with him yourself. Truth. Did you battle the king's men? I'm very sorry, Father. I did. Marion, what am I to do with you? Perhaps I should put you high in the tower and keep you safe. Well, even if you lock me up, I'll run away to Sherwood Forest. Robin Hood and his men will protect me there. Robin Hood? What is this news? Hold on. I hear Prince John coming. Listen carefully. I have an idea. So Lord Fitzwalter and Marion devised a plan just as Prince John rode up to the castle. That's enough, young lady. You're grounded. Go to your room. Where's your daughter? She should be hanged after what she did. I sent her to her room because she was at the festival so late. Marion, huh? Where is she? Look, the window is wide open. She must have escaped. Gone? My little girl? How could she betray me like this? Have no fear. Robin Hood won't win this time. So Lord Fitzwalter had stalled the king's men long enough that made Mary and made it back to Sherwood. In her disguise, but before she could find Robin Hood, she was intercepted by a passing stranger. Hey! Who are you? I go about my own business, so mind your own. Tell me name and business here, otherwise we shall fight. Fine, let's fight. Robin Hood soon found out that the antagonist was as good as him in swordsmanship. How in the world are you as good as me? Robin Hood, is that you? Marion, what are you doing here? The king's men were after me, so I fled. Well then, you shall live with us for the rest of your days. Robin Hood then took Marion's hand and led her to his home. There was a feasting and dancing that night, and Robin Hood toasted to his new queen. Let us drink first to King Richard and his queen. And let us drink to the king and queen of Sherwood, Robin Hood and Maid Marian. Hear, hear! Wow, that was one beautiful story. But before we close the curtain, we have one more surprise up our sleeves. The Inquisitor's Tale. If your daughter hasn't told you yet, we've been reading The Inquisitor's Tale for the last few months. The novel by Adam Gidwitz is a story set in, set in the Middle Ages about three children, Jean, Jacob, and William. These unlikely friends defy medieval prejudice and show that a Jew, a peasant, and a Saracen can perform miracles. So in order to capture the spirit of this, six of our peers have written a poem about one of the characters composed in a medieval style, alliteration or rhyming couplets. An idea modeled off Beowulf and the Canterbury Tales. Now, I'll stop talking and let you hear some of the next Wordsworths. of a wealthy 
wealthy lord and an African woman was placed in a French monastery when he was little. As a biracial person in the predominantly white society of France in 1242, he experiences feelings of loneliness and isolation throughout the novel, but he is strong in both body and mind. He is, saint, he is sent to Saint Denis with sacred books after shattering a stone bench. This is my poem about William. En route to the abbey of Saint Denis with the sack of religious books, I witnessed Jacob mourning his Jewish parents their lives Christians took. I witnessed John, a peasant girl, girl abused being a witch. We three share power and purpose, and that way we are wit rich. I witnessed the king in Blanche de Castile's flames of hate. I witnessed Michelangelo perish trying to save the Talmuds for the world's sake. I witnessed us rescuing the evil Queen Blanche from quicksand. I witnessed us preventing Talmud's preserved traditions being banned. I witness the world is made better by people helping our brotherhood. We are already martyrs as we witness against cruelty on behalf of what is good. Symbolizing righteous, loyalty, love, and safety. Gwenfort is the companion of Jean, William, and Jacob. Though a great hound, she is venerated as a saint in her home village in northern France after having risen from the dead. This is my poem about Gwenfort. Miraculously risen from the grave, dearest Gwenfort proves so loyal and brave. A copper blaze on a snow white coat, our holy greyhounds with a dignified coat, pose, joins the children on their daring quest to set France's cruelty and detest at rest. A stance of courage and defense, determination and undoubtable sense. At first glance, the knowledge of one true's intent her purity stands without a dent. Gwenfort is a dog that died but magically came back to life. Gwenfort helped John, William, and Jacob on their difficult journey through, together through medieval France as they learned to face their challenges and work together to overcome these problems. A companion to more than just John, Gwenfort is a dog with unending lawn love. Here is my poem about Gwenfort. Standing by John since birth, Gwenfort is the most loyal, a dog who came back, who died and came back to life, only to be part of so much strife. Together with William, Jacob, and John, they defeated knights who were so mean. Everyone knows her because of her fame. With her help, three saints they became. Sincere, supportive, and brave is she. She endlessly helps to set them free because of their stupidity. She is more than a dog when it comes to the end, all the relationships she helps mend. King Louis IX, as portrayed in the Inquisitor's Tale, is a project of his time. Though wanting to be a generous philosopher king, Louis is under the influence of his mother, Blanche of Castile, who dictates his life and prejudices. Throughout the story, he is the most open to social reform among the nobility, although also being hesitant, weak, and although intelligent, indecisive. In the Inquisitor's Tale, Louis is perhaps the greatest mind that Jacob, John, and William succeed in changing. This is my poem about King Louis. He sits alone on throne of gold, though ever touched by mother's cold, braved his kingdom with heart of steel, feeling so as not to feel, in a prison yet outside, frozen for all worldwide. The key is held by good Queen Blanche, and three children in a fighting stance. Stand in the sunset drowns above, and it's choking to reach a dove. Praise be to Louis, our glorious king, touching the sun but not burning his wing. Praise be to Louis of cathedrals on high, a lie to say they reach the sky. Praise be to Louis, the Icarus king, a call for far and wide to sing. Blanche of Castile has a powerful and influential role in the Inquisitor's Tale, but she was also a real queen who, lit, who ruled from 1223 through 1226. She ruled over France when her son was away on the crusade and always liked things her way. In the novel, she sees Jean, Jacob, and William as an obstacle trying to save the burning Talmud and other Jewish books that she wants to destroy. The children also see her as their enemy, but in the end, they save her from death in quicksand. Oh, but I'm giving away too much. I will let you watch the rest of her story unfold through the following poem. To keep the kingdom she loved so much, three children were held in her clutch. One saw the reality she had not the capacity to give her son the throne. 
That is how she became known. To three children seeking to win the race, to save books from evil fate, the power of books, oh so strong. She had to be stubborn, could not be wrong. Because the crown lay near her head, while crossing her commands, they filled with dread. Foul smells, certain spells, a cure dragon got the attention of a queen who had tension with three children and their teachers who were now welcomed as leaders. Nails were saved, friendships made, invitations given to a particular castle where water never ceased to glisten. Flames are rising, adventures and prizing, her despised near death. Instead, their loved ones last breath, an army at their tail searching for their grail. Others sank into the ground, leaving not a trace around. But even though many before her fell, her anger could not be quelled. Obstinate she remained. Divine right she claimed until caught in the sand of her very own land. No one could save her, night or not, so the saints decided, help her they ought. They will return, no cause for concern. In the meantime, all praise the Queen of France, all praise Her Majesty Blanche. After John and Jacob are take, taken captive by some roaming knights, they are tasked with slaying, or perhaps healing, a dragon who had been terrorizing the French countryside with its sickening stench. They discover the dragon is not, in fact, diabolical, but is actually sick to its stomach. Though Jacob's methods for healing the dragon are messy and a little gross, the whole group learns an important moral about healing rather than hurting. To the dragon, with your bright metallic scales, you're the best character in the, in the Inquisitor's tale. I am gripped tight in your talon claws. In you, I can see no flaws. The peasants flee from you in fright, but I think that you're pure delight. I hope you will now run free in the fields. My love for you is like a shield. I see your pure reptilian heart, though you once killed people with your farts. <laughs> That's your grail. That's your grail. 